Hello oh, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to Earth's magnetosphere, and specifically a somewhat intriguing simulation, or I guess sonification, that allows us to hear what Earth's magnetosphere potentially sounded like during one of the most important events in the last 42,000 years. The event when the Earth's magnetosphere dropped by a tremendous amount, during which time the magnetic poles almost reversed. And so let's discuss some of these new discoveries, starting with the discoveries from billions of years ago. And specifically, this study from just a few months back. Here we finally have some of the most exciting evidence in regards to the early magnetosphere. This is coming from rocks that were formed 3.7 billion years ago, discovered in some of the deposits in Iceland. With these rocks formed during the Archean Aeon, revealing something we always suspected but could never prove. These rocks definitively contain signs of an early magnetic field. Discovered in a very similar way how we usually discover these signs in much more recent deposits. This was basically the result of magnetite being deposited in a very certain way as various magnetic sediments follow the magnetic lines, creating various magnetic phenomena inside the deposits. And what's really exciting here is that the scientists can even determine the overall strength of the magnetosphere with these samples suggesting that the magnetosphere was not actually that weak. Here the strength was approximately 15 microtesla, and this was 3.7 billion years ago, which is only half of what it is today. The modern magnetic field is approximately 30 microtesla. And so even on this earlier Earth, the magnetosphere already existed and was already pretty strong. But not as strong as today, and as a result the scientists in the study actually suggest that it might have produced very specific effects. It obviously protected Earth, but did not protect it enough. And so here, because the protection from the solar wind was a little bit less, with the level of protection increasing in the last few billions of years, it possibly resulted in a dramatic loss of different types of atoms, for example certain types of xenon and hydrogen. And so basically this resulted in a kind of an atmospheric escape that affected the atmosphere to some extent. Although what effects this had on life on the planet and the eventual evolution of the atmosphere and the oceans is currently unknown. Nevertheless, discovering evidence for this early magnetosphere is super important, because it basically confirms what we always believed. This magnetosphere is very likely one of the main reasons life was able to secure itself so early on and why it was able to evolve, because all of this obviously protected the planet from additional atmospheric loss and from very powerful radiation coming from outside. But in terms of magnetosphere protecting life, there are still some unanswered questions and obviously some mysteries. And one such mystery comes from a different study. A study by Juan and his team, released in May of 2024, on the near collapse of geomagnetic field during a Diacaran period. The period famous for the existence of a lot of very unusual life, during which a lot of life evolved super quickly. And so here we have even more evidence for something unusual that happened during this time. This happened approximately 590 million years ago and was essentially a near collapse of the magnetic field lasting for approximately 26 million years. And so basically here, by studying additional magnetic deposits, researchers discovered that between 591 and 565 million years ago, the magnetic field was about 30 times weaker than today. Today this is referred to as ultra-low time-averaged field intensity and it's currently difficult to explain. But what's even more difficult to explain is what actually happened to life. Because life did not go extinct during this time, but potentially experienced something that's almost the opposite. Even though during these 26 million years there was very likely a lot more radiation on the surface, for some reason the oxygen levels dramatically went up, suddenly creating conditions where life could now evolve a lot of complexity and could now thrive to be multicellular. And so during this time there was a huge surge in atmospheric and oceanic oxygen, which lasted for approximately 10 million years, but more importantly resulted in a major explosion of biodiversity. This is often referred to as the Ediacaran explosion and we've actually discussed it relatively recently in one of the videos in the description. And so during this time there was an appearance of a lot of complex ecosystems and a lot of relatively complex animals. All of this coinciding with very high levels of oxygen, but all of this basically kind of stopping when the magnetosphere returned back to normal levels. And so here it's actually unclear exactly what happened, 
but the evidence seemed to suggest that relatively low levels of magnetosphere, which basically resulted in a much higher radiation on the surface, for some reason helped life become more complex instead of causing a typical extinction event. Which naturally suggests that we still don't really understand exactly what the magnetosphere does for life on the planet and exactly how it protects the surface or how it protects life. But all of these events happened a long time ago. What about slightly more recent times? Not millions of years ago, but instead thousands of years ago. Well, when it comes to more recent events, there are two types of events researchers are super interested in. The reversals and the excursions. Now, we actually have a lot of evidence for reversals that seem to, on average, happen every 300,000 years. And this is basically when the North and the South Magnetic Pole sort of switch places. But during the reversal, which can actually last for thousands of years, the magnetic field also kind of weakens and the North and the South Pole instead become multiple poles. And the last such event most likely happened 780,000 years ago. So technically, we're a little bit overdue for the next reversal. But we know that for life, these events don't seem to really do much. We know that a lot of life, including our ancestors, lived through a lot of this without any issues, and they don't seem to correlate with any major effects on the atmosphere or on the climate. But if such an event were to occur today, it would definitely affect our technology. So obviously things like satellites and telecommunication would suffer quite a lot. But as I mentioned, reversals are not that common. They basically happen every few hundred thousand years. But there is a different event that's slightly less predictable and potentially just as extreme. These are known as excursions. And the last excursion was a lot more recent. It basically happened when humans already existed, occurring approximately 41 to 42,000 years ago. And this one is really famous and has a name. It's known as the Le Cham excursion or the Le Cham event. This is something that very likely lasted for approximately 250 years to maybe 440 years, during which time the magnetic field also dropped quite dramatically, going down to about 5% of its current value and resulting in a partial reversal of the poles, which then returned back to normal. And during this event for about 500 years, it looks like the magnetic field was about 5 to maybe 25% of the current value, resulting in a much higher radiation on the surface, as recently discussed in one of the studies. And so during this excursion, when there were basically several poles instead of just one pole, researchers discovered definitive signs of various isotopes, specifically cosmogenic radionucleotides like beryllium-10, which can only be formed when there is more cosmic rays coming from outer space. And this normally tells us how strong the magnetic field generally is. And so here the evidence suggests much lower field for approximately 500 years. But more intriguingly, this unusual event correlates with a few things that happen on the planet. For example, we know that during this time, our friends, or technically our cousins Neanderthals, seem to have disappeared. And at the same time, a lot of cave art started to appear in various locations. Now this is obviously just a correlation, not a causation, but it is intriguing nevertheless. And so one implication here is that it might have actually helped our species to somehow become more dominant. But exactly why this would affect Neanderthals and not humans is of course unclear. As a matter of fact, a lot of scientists actually think that this is maybe just a coincidence. Nevertheless, the increase in beryllium-10 definitively suggests much higher cosmic rays and of course much lower magnetosphere. And so in one of the recent studies, researchers actually did something really cool. They basically sonified it, allowing us to hear what all of this potentially sounded like if we could actually somehow hear the magnetic field. And so here, by using the data from the ESA's SWARM mission, which is essentially three satellites that monitor the magnetic field by orbiting the planet, researchers were able to create a kind of an unusual animation, or technically sonification, first showing us how the magnetic field most likely sounded for the past 100,000 years. You can listen to this in one of the links in the description, but then creating the sounds of the Le Cham excursion. And so here, because we can't really see the magnetic field, in this case, we can hear it with these audio clips essentially showing us how these fields would sound differently if we could somehow detect these magnetic lines with our ears. And this is of course something that a lot of animals out there can kind of do. A lot of animals can sense the magnetic fields and so for them this is maybe not something unusual. And so in this case, this clip, and here I'm only going to play a small part of it,
allows us to imagine what it might be like to hear these excursions if they were to occur right now. Although in this case this is more of an artistic representation because this lasts for 3000 years. But more importantly, one of the reasons for these studies is to definitively show us that it's unlikely that anything like this is happening right now, unlike previous claims from the press that suggested that the magnetic field might actually flip really soon. As a matter of fact, the magnetic field seems to be as strong as ever and is not showing any signs of flipping or even starting these excursions anytime soon. Obviously though, we want to understand what would happen if this did occur or how to detect these events when they're about to start. But as I mentioned, excursions and reversals are very different. Reversal results in a permanent change of the poles and usually lasts for thousands of years. Excursion only produces temporary changes and lasts for only a few hundred years. But both events result in the weakening of the magnetosphere for at least some time. But just to summarize all of these studies and to basically come to some kind of a conclusion here, well, the conclusion is that we still don't really understand magnetic fields very well, or at least their effects on the surface of the planet. Because here the evidence suggests that, yeah, it can affect life, we just don't really know in what ways. And more importantly, it doesn't really seem to have an effect on human life, but it will probably have an effect on our technology. But it looks like nothing like this is happening anytime soon, and so for at least a few hundred years, we can definitely rest. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries, or when someone creates something else really cool, helping us visualize all of this in the process. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.